This is a good one. So the Asics Glider by 3, a wonderful looking shoe. Definitely has to be one of the most visually appealing shoes that I have pulled out of one of my boxes. So starting with the upper, I find that the shoe is kind of built on like a narrow platform with, within the upper. Um, and I'll continue to refer to that as I go on. But the forefoot and the toe box, it's soft. And even though it's somewhat narrow, uh, they, there is a toe guard, but it's very flexible. So if your foot does expand a little bit and you, or you need to stretch out your toes, it definitely allows for that. So I do like the toe box and it's breathable, which is very important. Um, and it's got some overlays on the side, the ASICS logo, which is very, very, very functional. You can feel it as you're cinching down the laces. It locks your foot in place, which is super important because it's a high stack height shoe, which I'll get to later. Um, and if you follow the overlays up to the the, um, the shoelace eyelets, um, it, there's almost like a rim that allows the laces to really cinch up over your foot. The only thing about that is the tongue is kind of fluffy. So when you're cinching it up for the first time, you might, if you're like me, have to keep recinching it, recinching it during your first run because it was compressing that tongue. It was almost like trying to cinch up a, a DC skate shoe around the collar of the ankle of your shoe very comfortable uh, it's not bulbous on the outside but all the support is on the inside and you can it's definitely there now if you go around back to the heel counter this to me is like the biggest sign that the shoe is made to be somewhat uh a stable because it, it's it's firm it's not flexible and, it, and it, it, it's not just firm from the back but it's firm along the sides of your heel uh, so uh even though that's kind of made like that the shoe isn't entirely stable so it is good that they that they've added that as an extra feature just to just to help with the stability um and I, but i'll get more back to that when i uh, talk about the midsole but first i'm gonna cut straight to the outsole i love this outsole it's it's almost like minimal grippy um i think it's their ahar rubber this might be my first uh, a6 shoe with the ahar rubber as you can see i do have some wear which kind of stinks a little bit um, but i was dragging my feet when i got tired i took it for one one or two break and runs and then a 15 mile long run and an 18 mile long run and I, I started dragging my feet so no surprise that i put a little bit of wear but it feels great also with the outsole you can see there's some exposed midsole rubber on the outsole which isn't a problem at all because um, cosmetically it looks just fine uh, it's completely acceptable and the decoupled groove, uh, it's good in the heel. You can feel the heel compress a little bit, which, which is great, uh, deeper into your long runs. As for the decoupled groove uh, going towards the forefoot, they say it's to guide your foot. I don't really feel any sort of guidance because the stack height is so high. The only thing that it really does to me is show the plate. Um, but I do like that because you can see the grooves in the plate. And I think that allows the plate to bend um, where you need it in your gaze cycle and get rigid where you need it um, in your gait cycle. So when you're standing still, it, the shoe feels like a halfway, it feels kind of flat, but until you start to roll your foot forward and you toe off, it allows your foot to do a natural motion. So it's pretty cool. I wouldn't have known, I wouldn't have known it. It wouldn't have been as obvious if I didn't see the plate uh, with my own eyes. Um, so I feel like it's more cosmetic than functional, uh, but I like it nonetheless. It is cool. Um, it's definitely, I think this is definitely one of the coolest outsole shoes that I have by design right now. I love that it's minimal, has strategically placed rubber, and it is just perfect. You know, the, the minimal amount of rubber you have, the better your, uh, your, your, your ground contact will be. I feel like this is, the, the shoe isn't loud at all. Um, so I like, it's perfect to me. Now to the midsole, great combination. I, I literally don't have anything bad to say about these two rubbers being, uh, uh, these two compounds being coupled together. Uh, it gives the perfect amount of squish and bounce in the right places. Um, this is a high stack midsole though. And if you look from the back, you can see that it tapers in towards the heel, which kind of gives me those endorph stocking endorphin speed endorphin pro vibes where that instability comes from the tapering near the heel. 
And ultimately, since the shoe is also kind of built on a narrow platform, I feel like uh, it's not super stable. One of the greatest things about this midsole is that plate is strictly there for structure. So it has a five or six millimeter drop. And when you stand flat, the shoe feels like you're standing flat from your heels to your midfoot. But it's not until you kind of roll forward do you feel that rocker really come into play. And that's a testament to the fact that this plate is really doing its job by holding the shoe in its shape. I feel like that's so important for the gait cycle because it just makes it feel so much more natural. The upper has like a soft, squishy feel and it's, it's, uh, it's, it's very comfortable, I'll have to say. It's not too soft. It's not like an invincible song. I'll do a comparison uh, at another time. But it just has me a little nervous though. Part of me wishes they started off with the Flight Foam Blast that's in the Nova Blast 2, because this one just seems to have compressed a little bit. Like I, I definitely have lost some stack height, which makes me nervous. Um, so I'm going to do an update after 100 miles, or maybe more than 100 miles, to get a better view. Because my shoes tend to die out at about 250 miles, they just wear out. The midsole, it either loses its structure or it just stops, it just, just sort of dies out on me and doesn't return anything. So I'm really hoping that doesn't happen with this shoe because I really like this, this midsole here. The regular flight foam at the bottom, it compresses just right. It has what it needs to have for the long run. And I do kind of feel like the, the Flight Foam Blast Plus compresses a little bit over the long run. I realized that about mile, mile 15 of my 18 mile run, when I slowed down to a walk, just to stretch a little bit, um, I felt like uh, the forefoot had, had given. So it makes me a little nervous, but um, we'll just have to see in the long run. It kind of makes me wonder how would this shoe have fared for like a smaller or like a lighter person. I would have to say that the shoe works best for me and steady pace. Not because I'm trying to run steady, but it's just what kind of happens when I get going in this shoe. This is how I feel about the shoe. I, I would have to give it like 8.5 out of 10 because it is absolutely wonderful. If I could run in it slower or if I could run in it faster, um, if I didn't, if it didn't already lose some stack height, um, I would have given it higher, but uh, there are some aspects of the shoe that are making me nervous when it comes to longevity. It's more about the compression, the loss of responsiveness, which is my biggest fear. When a shoe loses its response, I do like firm shoes, but when these types of shoes lose their responsiveness, they also lose their structural integrity. And that's a huge problem for me because I am a heavier runner. So I think this is a great shoe and I would recommend it for anyone, uh, whether you're a forefoot striker, midfoot striker, a heel striker, perfectly accommodating for everyone. I feel like they hit the shoe right on the head. And even though I gave it, even though I gave it an 8.5 out of 10, I think this might suit someone else absolutely perfectly. Now, this is my first glide ride. I didn't get the other two because they, they kind of scared me. That huge rocker just, just made me nervous. But this one, you don't even feel it. The midsole kind of packed in a little bit. So I'm going to be going back to the normal insole that came with the shoe. Um, it's very supportive, it's very comfortable, um, and this is definitely one of the best insoles that I have seen come with this shoe. So they really put a lot into the A6 Glide Ride 3. So I hope this uh, this review helps. Um, I mean, the shoe's already kind of like <laughs> bought out in some places. I know that some people already have their mind made up about it. It has glowing reviews. Um, I really appreciate this one and I hope you enjoyed my video. So with all that being said, thank you for watching. Please, please, please check out my other videos. And if you don't mind, you can subscribe if you want. I mean, or you can just keep watching my videos. That's cool too. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoy your day.